the epitome of girl boss right now. My new friend, Jessica Lane. I think that business is boring. Yeah, you know, I don't like business. I don't like it. I don't even want to do it. Like, If you had to start managing your business or running your business, uh, it would go to shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's I, the most amount of money you've lost in one day of trading? $100,000 in about a day and a half. What's the most amount of money you've ever made in a day? Maybe like thousand in a day. I'm sitting here looking at you like blah 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 <laughs> blah blah. <laughs> she really thinks I'm joking. <laughs> Girl, I get I go to Vegas and I gamble, all right? Just show me where to enter, show me where to exit. I'm in and I'm out. I ain't having no kids, so I got a million liquid in my bank account. He was like, you'll have that by the end of the year. I had literally made it in a month. That's it right there. Not even a year before y'all got pregnant, girl. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm Why doing the math you? over here. <laughs> Why you gotta put that out? We got out it. Like I'm that. doing. I'm doing the math because hey. if you carry the one over here, multiply it times two. <laughs> <laughs> the title of this is called Full Transparency. <laughs> hey, hey, and welcome to another episode of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins, where I am bringing you entrepreneurship fully transparent. Sometimes you get me by myself, and other times you get me with some of my dope friends who may have been around for a while, and then others who have been brand new, brand newly introduced to me in Y'all, I am so excited about the guest that I have today. I've been trying to get her to lunch, to dinner, to brunch, to whatever, but she is a business mogul, kinda. She <laughs> is a brand new mom. She is a fiance. She is the epitome of girl boss right now, and I want to welcome my new friend, Jessica Lane, to the couch. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I am pretty amazing. Are you always this, like, mild-mannered, like, reserved? Typically. I don't believe it. Are you really? Yeah. Like, when I you with your chilling. friend friends. Yeah. This is you? Yeah, this is us. Okay. So then let's talk about how we are able to leverage all of this, like, really, really mild. Because you're talking to me so cool. <laughs> you're talking to me like we're on a Facebook group. <laughs> this is you all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Okay. I want to talk about how you leverage. Are you an introvert? Yes, okay. very much so. Yeah. But I'm an introverted extrovert, meaning that, like, it's crazy because I say me and Michael are complete opposites. He's the social butterfly. Like, he will go in a room, talk to everybody. Like, he has a lot of friends. I have, like, not a lot. I'm mm -hmm. very in the house stay mm -hmm. in the house but if I need to speak like I will speak where you know he don't like to be on stage but I will be on stage like hey y'all and then go right back in my little shell yeah. yeah okay so for those of you who are newly introduced to Jessica Lane she is a trader mm -hmm. uh, by career choice tell us yeah. what that means I'm a day trader, meaning that I wake up and make my money and go on about my business. Mm -hmm. What are you What are you trading? Um, different things like I trade metals, so like gold indices, like Dow Jones, as people know it in the stock market. But in like trading, we use it as like US thirty. Mm -hmm. I trade for it. It's the foreign exchange market, so different currencies against one another. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you trade <laughs> stocks. And no, I don't trade. You don't stocks. trade stocks. No. Okay. So look. So in the currency market, you have it as indices. So I mean, technically, it is quote unquote stocks because it's the top thirty in the U.S. stock exchange. Mm -hmm. But I don't trade it as a stock. Like it's not like I'm putting on an options play where I'm like investing in Apple and waiting for a time period to be over so I can close the position. No, I'm not trading like an actual stock is are you trading the value of it yeah the so fluctuations that occur so typically it's like over here oh i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i just we got so i was like was well, something wrong with the mic so like the way it works is like you have price fluctuations that occur um but it's not really like trading it as a options play is it's this strictly currency Trading because I come from I, this may be a joke to you because it was a joke to me now. Okay. But I used to be involved in the network marketing space, and mm -hmm. there were these companies that you could yeah. join, and they taught me how to trade forex. Now you I did say IML? I did. Did you oh, do wow. IML? Mm. You did. I IML? heard about IML. Had, okay. And so let me tell you the whole story about this. Okay. Okay. So um, 
getting out. So I graduated from Selman. There was a whole like college thing that fluctuated when it came to IML and currency trading, so forth and so on. Um, one of my neos, I pledged Delta. One of my neos introduced me to IML. Mm-hmm. I got in it all of one month and was like, this is not what I want to do because I tried to learn. And it's like, it's very, I don't want to say scamish in a sense of maybe the value of what they have is okay, but it's like, it's a whole bunch of people. It's like the blind leading the blind. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody wants you to sign up, sign up, sign up, but they're not teaching anything. So I came into it. I'm like, okay, like teach me. And they're like, oh, go get three people and then you'll learn. And I'm like, no, I can't go get nobody until you tell me how to do it first, because what am I going to tell these people when I go get them? You know what I'm saying? I feel like they were looking at more so volume opposed to actually really trying to teach somebody. Welcome to the world of network marketing. So I got my big break financially in the industry of network marketing. Um, I started at the bottom like you, like I don't know about this. I was raised to believe that MLM was pyramid schemes and scams Mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Um, But my first mentor was involved in network marketing, and I just kind of followed the path that he took. And one day I became the number one female income earner of one of my companies that I was involved in. Um, You're very much right. Uh, There are sometimes companies where people are more focused on the recruiting aspect than they are focused on the use of the product. And in IML's case, the use of the product was actual Forex education and knowledge and the training platforms. I actually learned how to trade very much Mm -hmm. um, in IML, but I was super intentional about finding um, the people who were the traders because like you, I wanted to not just recruit people just to have this volume-based revenue coming in, but I wanted to show people how to actually leverage it and make money. And me and uh, Justin Owens, you know Justin, Mm -hmm. we would meet at my condo, um, Mm -hmm. several of us, and we literally studied learning how to trade. Mm -hmm. The problem at that time was the more successful I became in my business, the less time I had to, we used to do scalp trading, Mm -hmm where you're literally putting in a trade, sitting at the computer and jumping out, putting mm-hmm. in. That's all I knew how to do. I stuck to my lane, right? Um, but, but then did you I, made money consistently doing it? Every day. Mm-hmm. Every day I made a lot of money scalp training, mm-hmm. uh, trading. But as I didn't have, uh, as I got busier, girl, I would put in a trade and walk away from my laptop, be gone for three hours and come back like, oh, my God. I lost everything yeah. <laughs> I would lose um, because I didn't do stop losses mm-hmm. and I'm just in there, you know, doing trading. So I understand your perspective, but I'm really equally impressed because IML wasn't that long ago mm-hmm. and you have literally made millions in this industry, which means that you learned very quickly. So I am, I would say it started like 2017. That's mm-hmm. when it first like came like out on the rise or whatever case may be. I started literally t- the end of 2017, December 2017 going into 2018. What made you interested? I, one of my friends, she was, uh, she bought a house at 23. I was like, girl, how? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then she told me trading. Now, later on, I learned like it was so much more than that. But that was my first peak in it, because at that per- at that time, I was a personal trainer and I was like, you know, training clients like I mean, I made a lot of money as a personal trainer. Well, what I thought at that time was a lot of money. How much was that? I would make about nine thousand dollars a month. OK, so we're time. right over six. Yeah. Figures. But for me being 23 24 25 making that money like it was good for me like it wasn't no you know what I'm saying but the problem was was that it was very inconsistent meaning that I I did it smartly I would say in a way because most personal trainers they have one client and then they have another client and then they have another client and it's like they're spending all their hours in their business I would group 10 women together Mm -hmm. And I would work three hours out of that day. So I would work 5 a.m. group, 6 a.m. group, 7 a.m. group, 10 women together. And then they would stay more focused and more consistent because if they're in a group, like if somebody don't show up, then the person going to tell you like, girl, where were you at today? You know what I'm saying? We used to do brunches and everything. So I would kind of create like a fitness community, Mm -hmm. I would say. So the money was a little bit more consistent, but still if somebody thought it was too much for that month or, you know, somebody got sick. It was or, flaky. Yeah. Up and down. Very much so. So you 
get introduced to Forex mm -hmm. through this network marketing company. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people would have looked at that same opportunity like, nah, all of this is scam. Because network marketing, people don't realize that Forex is just short for foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. if you travel to Mexico yeah. and you exchange the U.S. dollar for a peso, mm -hmm. you literally just participated in a Forex right. transaction, right? Why, why, why do I love that you even understand this coming into it? <laughs> Girl, I got like, a little sense about me. Okay. Um, no, but seriously, that's what it is. And people mm -hmm. don't understand mm -hmm. when network marketing came out and made it so cool mm -hmm. to do it, mm -hmm. then the general mass of people who mm -hmm. don't understand they associate forex with a scam mm -hmm. um when you're in this company you're not learning mm -hmm. you don't see it as a scam you see it as, a, as oh, an no. opportunity no because straight off the jump i was making money mm -hmm. and then i was seeing my account increase and i made so much I, I started out like you in the sense of just scalping and mm -hmm. I would scalp like back to back to back. And I was like making a lot of money. Like I was putting like nine standards on gold and just like hopping in it and then see it turn blue and just close my account real quick. But over time I realized like, that's why I asked like how long did it work out? Cause over time for me, it wasn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, it's for sure not. It wasn't sustainable at all. And so I wanted to learn, okay, I knew at one point I made money, so how can I consistently make this money? So I knew it was real, and then I did the research. Anything I come to, I do the research. Like, I learned about different investment traders, like day traders that were making, you know, six figures in a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm one of those people, if somebody else can do it, like, I know I can too. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So what makes us different? Okay. The only thing that's making us different is you have the knowledge and I don't. So let me go get the knowledge so I can be on your level. Cause if, if God blessed you, then he could bless me too. Mm -hmm. You don't favor nobody. That's a fact. That's a fact. So you go out and start seeking the information on your own. Yes. Okay. Now at this point, do you realize that this is about to be a career path for you or was this just an extra money? Oh no, it was going to be a career path. Okay. Cause I really realized like, I can make the amount of money that people make in a year. I can make that in a day if I just stay planted and grind my ass off and truly learn this skill set. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't boring to me. Mm -hmm. Like when I was approaching it, it wasn't boring at all. And the more money I It's boring lost, to me. Is it? Well, okay. So I, when I'm not making money, it's but well, So I don't trade anymore, mm -hmm. just for the record, because I never learned the actual skill set mm -hmm. of trading. Yeah. I learned how to rig it up, right? Yeah. We're going to scalp all day. Yeah. And for those who don't know, scalping is like when you're literally sitting at your computer, you enter the market at a certain point, you're watching it, and as soon as it looks like it's about to go down or up in the wrong direction opposite of how you entered the market, you hurry up and jump out. And you made a couple hundred dollars, you made a couple thousand dollars. Like we had some really big moments sometimes. Um, and so that was exciting. But learning the skill, like, I'm so impressed that you took the time. You going to teach me? I mean, if it's what you want to do. The I fact mean, that you have a background, then that makes it way more easier. Background is strong language. Okay. So <laughs> the back, the fact that you understand, like, the basics of it, yeah. I think that we can work with that. Okay. But can I challenge something for people who just the ideology of scalping real quick? Yes. In IML, yes, that was scalping. But still, like, you do have scalpers that, like, make a lot of money, but they have a system towards their scalping. Like, I think it's two different ways you approach it. Like, people on IML at the time, and even which I learned, scalping was hopping in the market as soon as it turns blue. And like you said, it looks like it's about to go down. You hurry up and pull your profits. Yeah. But that... As I learned the skill set, that's not scalping. Like, that's having anxiety in the market For sure. and just gambling yeah. nonstop. Like, true scalping is, like, you really have, you know what I'm saying, your setups as you would take in an intraday trade or a swing trade. And it's a systematic approach of how you're approaching the market, mm -hmm. but you're just staying in it a shorter time. So you might just be trading your entries on your, let's say, 15-minute chart. And then, like, you're looking at your support and resistance on your 30-minute, but opposed to having that anxiety as like when we first first started mm -hmm. it's like no nah, like I see my structure yeah and now I'm exiting off of a certain calculation yeah you know what I'm saying a certain rules like I'm exiting off of my rules opposed to just 
in and out. You teach this to mm -hmm. the general public, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the part that um, is so intimidating are the technical, the technicalities, the technical language behind it, because what you just said, we were actually doing Now I never understood really how to uh, read charts and trends and all that, and all the lines that's going back and forth. We had someone else on our team who understood that very much, and we leveraged what they knew to yeah. make our trades, and, and it worked, right? Um, until it didn't work anymore. And I really believe that if I would have stuck with it and learned the skill set, how long did it take you from – the time that you decided to get educated, how long did it take you to really understand the market? I became profitable April 2019, exactly. Okay. April 2019. How long was that from you starting December to get educated? December 2017 to April 2019. But this is the thing. I was I started to be consistent April 2019. I still wasn't making the amount of money that I make now. I just started to strictly be consistent. Now, the reason I say that is because it's a whole mental process that you have to go through after you get the skill set. The psychology of trading is a whole different thing from just learning how to day trade and learning the charts. Because then you can understand the chart. You can do an analysis, but actually, like, not having anxiety or, like, you know, you see your account and draw down and knowing what you know and sticking to okay my account's in a little bit of drawdown right now but I have my trading plan I have my trading rules this structure is not broken let me maintain this order like that's a whole different process I'm sitting here looking at you like blah 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah blah lines and structure you know, see, and drawdown and yeah girl I get I go to Vegas and I gamble all right just show me where to enter show me where to exit I'm in and I'm out but can anybody do this um yes and no anybody with the wherewithal to stick it out mm -hmm. can do it anybody that is emotionally stable Mm -hmm. can do it and anybody that has the discipline mm. discipline's important yeah if you're not a disciplined person you absolutely like hang it up do something else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you weren't trading today what would you be doing um I don't know I could see myself being a, a mogul trainer really yeah, so you go back to the fitness was world. One hundred percent popping. Mm -hmm. It and still I, is. Thank you. Yeah, my six pack's not as it was. You just but, had a baby. Yeah, but still, like I, yeah, I could see myself doing that. Like I probably would be like I wouldn't want to just be like a personal trainer, like somewhat of a fitness empire of some sort, mm -hmm. like hosting. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Something to that effect, though. I was always, like, in the I want to make my own money type of thing. I wouldn't be working for anybody for sure. Have you ever had a job before? Yeah, I did. I worked at Best Buy. Okay. I worked at Best Buy. Ago. Really? Yeah, in college. Oh, <laughs> like? I worked at Best we Buy the same. too. Y'all, we did not plan <laughs> these outfits. We you did. hear me? But down to the gold accessories on our jackets, um, we're doing this. But, yeah, I worked at Best Buy. Yeah. What's the ugliest job you ever had? That was it. Best Buy yeah. was ugly. <laughs> you are privileged. <laughs> I worked at UPS. Oh, no. no I was no, a package no. handler. So I, I worked at, I don't know if people, I used to love sneakers. So I worked at Jimmy Jazz all of like three months. Mm -hmm. um, and then I worked at Best Buy. Okay. Jimmy Jazz was ghetto. And you went from that to personal training mm -hmm. to trading. Mm -hmm. And you are here now. Mm -hmm. You are in this thing. You've made seven figures, mm -hmm. multiple seven figures yeah. at this point. Have you made seven figures in the market or have you in made seven? You have. Mm -hmm. Huh. What was your highest? I think that you need to go back to trading. You think so? Like, yes, because this is the thing. Even with you doing business coaching, mm -hmm. right? Like you understand analytics. You have to understand analytics For in sure. order to grow somebody's business. Mm -hmm. If you put that same amount of energy and from what I know of you, you're a disciplined person. You're consistent because clearly full transparency has been going. Yeah, it's consistently. going. Yeah. Evidence. Little I evidence. I mean, I'm just saying, like, one plus one equals two. You know what, though? I do have my weaknesses. Um, I say yes to a whole lot of stuff I shouldn't say yes to. Mm -hmm. um, I need to be focused. You know what I mean? So right now in my own life, I literally just moved around the corner from one condo building to another 
because I needed new energy. Mm -hmm. um, I lived in the building where I lived for nine years. That particular unit I lived in for three years. Unfortunately, I moved in like right before the shutdown. So I had COVID in that unit four times and I've convinced myself like this ain't it. I can't be successful here anymore. And it's time to, you know, go on to do other things. One of the drawbacks to um, my success, like the reason that it may have taken so long, uh, I'm 44. And so the reason that I feel like it may have taken so long for me is because I've procrastinated. I've bought into my own excuses. I could have been just as successful in that unit, but I've convinced myself that I can't, right? So I've moved for this new energy. But the biggest thing, positive distractions. Mm -hmm. Positive distractions are things that are good decisions, right? They're positive. They're helping people. They're yielding a positive result, but it's keeping you unfocused on the main thing. Mm -hmm. And I do want to diversify my portfolio, but I would want to know, like, what kind of what kind of time do I have to invest? Can I is yeah, it me starting a another business or is me? Is it just me learning a new skill set? Just like I would learn to, I don't know, do my makeup, put, put lashes on. Yeah. So, I mean, here's the thing. When it comes to trading, it definitely takes a lot of time to learn. But once you get to the point where you are where I am, it's like I literally look at the market on Sundays and set my alerts and don't go back to the market until my alert gets hit. Okay. How long is it going to take to learn under your leadership on you and your work ethic and discipline? Okay. So if I went into your program your for discipline. anybody three months, if you are strictly like disciplined and you have emotional stability. Okay. I'm emotionally, st I mean, yeah, I read the book. That, at least. that is <laughs> The important part. My mentorship is three months, though. Okay. It's three months. How much time? Every single talking? week is an assignment, and mm -hmm. then you have to do the homework for that assignment mm -hmm. and, like, do it consistently. But the you average know? person who's in your program, they're employed, they have a business, they have something else going on where they're making money, and they make it through successfully. Mm -hmm. So it's possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we go through your mentorship. I'm getting it done for three months. I usually kind of really shut down um, business-wise in the winter time anyway. So we're approaching that time of year. I think maybe, you know what I mean? You could, but then you just said what I said was boring. <laughs> it is boring. But you know what I have learned about wealthy people? It's boring. What they do is boring. But, but then on the flip side, for instance, right? Like, I think that business is boring. It is. Like, and for that's, me. Yes. Like, I tell people all the time, I am not a businesswoman. I am an investor. It's two completely different things. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to be a businesswoman. Like, I don't like it. I don't even like emails. I don't like checking emails. Like, people calling my phone. It's annoying as hell. I don't want employees. I don't want. No. Like, it's annoying. Like, it's a constant headache. Like so people, I am a businesswoman and I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you bringing me to the point like earlier before we even sat down, you were like, I don't do any of the business. I was asking you a couple of questions before we got started and you kept looking to your Michael, fiance, Michael. Yes. Um, Michael, her fiance is, I believe, the founder of the whole EYL movement, Earn Your Leisure movement. Um, and so somebody if we're being transparent, we'll look at you and say, girl, you just got it because he got it. <laughs> How do you respond to that? I mean, but if they know me and followed me before him, they would see I had a whole So you were doing this him. before him. Yeah, it's, mm. that's what attracted him to me. That's what attracted him. So you started trading 2017, 2018. When did you guys meet? <laughs> We've been together for two years. Okay. We had a very fast relationship, actually. Okay. Um, when we meet, 2020, what is this, 2024? So we've been together two years. October made two years. Okay. So what is this, October? Okay. So, okay, so you had your thing going on for like three, four years before he mm -hmm. even came into the picture. Yeah. But do you find it hard being connected to a man who's so powerful, like people giving you your own credit? No, because I feel like I'm not really around to hear anything that people say or, I mean, I have the receipts mm -hmm. and I have all the results. Like I've changed people's lives daily. Yeah. So I don't, I hear from my community. I don't really look external, so I don't really hear it. Like I think people just look at us like a power couple and that's it. 
That's like, I don't think people diminish what I've done because I'm with a successful man. And again, I was on Earn Your Leisure. That's how we met. So you were a guest. Was, yes. Be clear. I was a guest. Mm -hmm. I was a guest on the show. And that's how we met. Yeah. Sometimes I ask this question and I know they're going to be mad at me. Like, no, she didn't make it because of him. We know that. Mm -hmm. But I have to ask y'all because sometimes as soon as you're connected to as soon as a woman is connected to a man of power, it's mm -hmm. like everything you did before that doesn't matter. It's you are now this because you're connected to him. For mm -hmm. example, um, I have been popping as a coach since 2014. I started doing social proof in 2020. And now it's like, oh, Donnie connected with David, my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, and now that's the reason why I'm so successful. But I, the largest stages that I've ever spoken on were before I even knew who David was, yeah. right? And it used to be really frustrating that mm -hmm. people only saw me as like his sidekick or because of this or because of that when... I've been doing what I do since before I even knew David's name. Right. And so sometimes we have to work a little harder yeah. um, because of the persona that yeah. people that people give us. Yeah. They assign to us when we're connected to somebody yeah. powerful. Yeah. Isn't that disgusting? It's so disgusting. It is. Sick of it, really. The narrative is. is played out. It is. Like the narrative Very is played out. So. Even if... Even if that were the case, you still have to maintain everything that you've built. Yeah. Yeah. It is disgusting. I feel like people don't see the amount of work that women put in mm -hmm. external from a man. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a whole thing. And I don't think men, no offense, babe, I don't think men could do the same that we do. Never. At all. Never. Because... Yeah, no, not at all. In your relationship, you're in a power couple. You're one half of a power couple. Mm -hmm. What do you contribute as a strength to the relationship that Michael needs support with? And then what does he contribute as the strength to the relationship? Ooh, this is full transparency. This is real deep. <laughs> okay, re-ask the question because I got to. Yep. So what's your strength in the relationship? I'm supportive. Mm -hmm. I, um, dang, I don't even know how to answer this question. What is my strength in a relationship? I'm a wonderful mother. I am the type of person that anything I feel like, like I'm very catering. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't submissive at first mm. at all. Was it a problem? Yes. Did he almost break up with you? I think I almost broke up with him. Ooh, wait, <laughs> because he wanted submission and you didn't want to be submissive. I felt like at that time, he needed to show me that he was worth the submission. That's it right there. I think that's that, the conversation. I think that a lot of women are submissive too soon. And it's like, is this even your person? Mm. I had to know that this was my person before we were going to get to that level because this is the thing. And this is why I stayed single for so long. Michael's my real first relationship also. Really? Yes, okay. very much so. I stayed single for the majority first part of my life because I wanted the success. Success was my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what it was. And I just wanted to get to a certain place in my life. Like, I was the one that, like, you know, when you're a kid and you're like, I want to be married by this age. I want to have kids by this age. I want this much money in my bank account. Da, 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 da. Like, I needed it in order. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of those things where I felt like, Hey, hey, CEO Donnie Wiggins here, and I am so excited to announce my new mentorship group is dropping. You may have already heard about it, but I wanted to, I wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth directly from me. My new mentorship group, Actionable CEO, for entrepreneurs who are interested in professional growth, personal growth, and financial growth. You want to learn from me. Y'all have been asking for this for the last three years, and I have finally brought Actionable CEO back to serve you every single week, direct mentorship from me. You will also hear from other people who are in my community that I believe will be greatly impactful to you. You're going to get behind the scenes. We're going to be spending some time together live. This is not pre recorded, this is live mentorship. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be connected, feel connected, you want to elevate your brand, you want to elevate your life, you want to elevate your level of success. Actionable CEO is for you. ActionableCEO.com. See you there. I don't even know if you're my person. I don't know if you're going to be a distraction to mm -hmm. me. Like, I need to get to where I want to be first. It's so crazy because um, 
I had touched a million dollars before him, but I told him, I was like, we sat down. It was September. It was in September. Was it September of the first year? I don't know. We were talking. We were friends first. And then we started, like, talking and stuff like that. But I remember we were sitting at Papa Do's, and he was like, you're going to be um, the mother to my kids. And oh. my wife, he had told me that. And I was like, I ain't having no kids, so I got a million liquid in my bank account. He was like, you'll have that by the end of the year. This was September when he had told me that. And then I was like, yeah, or whatever. And then I had literally made it in a month. Mm, he Because, for instance, remember I said, like, I was literally only trading. Like, I I made seven figures trading. Like, trading and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was so into trading. I didn't care about business. I didn't care about, I don't want people calling me. Like, none of that. He's like, you need to streamline what you do. Like, you teach free every Sunday anyway. That's my give back day to the world. You teach free anyway. Like, why don't you just streamline this? Because I felt like if I record videos and give it to people for them to learn, like, it's very structured. Like, how can I do it to where every single week they're still going to do their homework if I'm not holding their hand through it? Because through a video, you could just go to the next video, you know. But I wanted to get across to my community, you actually have to do the work. He's like, you know it's a way to do that, right? And then he literally just went in. He was like, all right, sit down. Put a camera in front of my face. Recorded, like, the videos that I needed to do. I launched that course, and in a month, it made a million dollars. How did you market that? I didn't. How did you make the sales? I had made so many people successful prior to. I had millionaire students prior to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just off of me guiding people through the market. Like, I was doing one-on-ones because I felt like that was the main way to make sure I ensured their success. You know what I'm saying? So... Word of mouth, really. So you drop a course, and then suddenly people just start saying, oh, Jessica dropped a course. Mm-hmm. Did you call people? And Because there's somebody I who's as skilled sales. as you are right now, and all they're missing is streamline this. What I did first was I had put in the work for so many years prior to that. Yeah. So as I was trading my Sunday night call, for instance, I have to look at, remember I told you that at the beginning of every week on Sundays, I will go through the market to see which trades I'm going to trade that week, and I will set my alerts. That's how I would get into my trades. I said, okay, I know it's a lot of people that need help. I know a lot of people need my help, so I'm just going to do it for free every Sunday so y'all know the trades that I'm getting into because I have to mark up regardless, so I might as well do it live so you guys can see it. So people had already followed the journey to see my trades were playing out back to back to back to back to back. And then everybody had wanted to learn, but I didn't have the capacity to teach everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was getting mass emails before that point to say, can you mentor me? Can you mentor me? Can you mentor me? But I didn't have the time. You were just ignoring them. Yeah. Because you didn't have the time for it. Yeah. And then Michael comes along. And he's like, you need to stream like this. (laughs) And then that's what happened. Okay. So you end up making a million dollars from your course in a matter of 45 days at that point. Did it even take 45 days? No, it was a one. Well, yeah, kind of, sort of, because it was 873000 in a month to be as it, mm-hmm. which was close to a million. So I just say a million okay. but before that. Okay. Now it was. So a lot of people um, during that time frame around when you hit your success from your course sales, A lot of entrepreneurs who are good at a thing, once they start selling courses and coaching, they stop doing the thing. Mm -hmm. Did that happen to you? No, because he did all the business. I was still in the same position that I was with trading. Mm -hmm. So I was not looking at it like that. Um, The only time I slowed down with trading was when I was on bed rest with Legend. When I was pregnant, I got put on bed rest. I slowed down not when the course launched, but when I did not have the emotional capacity to, like, psychology is the most important part of trading. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So when I knew that I wasn't going to be able to, you know, I don't want to be, I would rather not trade than to possibly take a trade and lose it because my mindset isn't right. Mm-hmm. So even when my students, I tell them like, if your mind not where you need to be or your life's not like stable right now, like still look at the charts to make sure like you're on point with your skill set, but don't place your trades. So I stopped placing my trades because of that. Mm. So if emotions and psychology play a whole big role would you would you say it's safe to like if you're going through a bad breakup yes. that's impacting don't you? Trade. Just don't trade. Don't trade. All right, so you got to be happy. Yes, to trade. Yeah, <laughs> I mean you just got to be emotionally sound because when you're going through things, you can make false decisions or altered decisions based off of emotion. Mm. You know, um, and you not even realize it. It's just you when you're analyzing, you just got to be on point. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. And then before you get in a trade, you just have to make sure what you thought you saw was what you really saw. Because if not, your money's going to be gone. Yeah. Like trading is not easy. And your money can be gone just like that. Just as much money as you can make, you can lose it just like that, which is why the skill set's so important. What's the most amount of money you've lost in one day of trading? $100,000 in about a day and a half over the course of three days because I tried to revenge trade after that. Okay. But this was very early on, and that's literally what catapulted me to my success. When I lost $100,000, I got depressed, like (laughs) super depressed. I imagine so. The the $100,000 that I made, I literally made it off of what you talked about at the very beginning, like literally just – it was beginner's luck. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to – and it was like – extremely over leveraging like no skill set at all just scalping like you mentioned at the beginning of this scalping at the beginning of this and then like using crazy lot sizes and this when it turned blue just like gambling for Mm -hmm. real real. I made Mm -hmm. the hundred thousand from gambling Mm -hmm. and then I lost it and I was like so depressed because you had just made it why would it upset you even when I would go down well, because I kept funding it with my savings account. Got you. Yeah. I kept funding the account with my savings account, too. Mm-hmm. So even though I had made some money, as soon as I lose a little bit more than I wanted to, I knew that the more money you had in, the more money you can make. Mm-hmm. So I kept every time, like, my clients would pay me or whatever, I'll put it into the market. The wire transfer was fast. Yeah. <laughs> It was like a crackhead for trades. <laughs> <laughs> it is like a crackhead for trades. What's the most amount of money you've ever made in a day? It just depends. The reason I say that is because I used to trade with two accounts before I had like my psychology where it needed to be because that's another thing in trading. If you don't if you don't come from money to see your account over a certain amount can give you a whole bunch of anxiety because mind you if you got a hundred thousand dollar account you got to be able to see your account negative ten thousand to even make a profitable you know what i'm saying like your account could easily go in ten percent drawdown Mm -hmm. whatever the case may be so you have to be able to see those numbers fluctuate Mm -hmm. now as that number increases let's say your account gets to like five hundred thousand most people can't stomach to see their account negative 50,000 or whatever, like the number at the top or the number that's negative. So Mm -hmm. I had two different accounts and I would literally get that. I would um, withdraw the account down to 50,000 and build it back up to a hundred thousand, then withdraw it back down. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that, but I would twin trade those accounts. So it was this um, company where you can like copy your trade into another account. So I would twin trade it up get the profits, withdraw it in my bank account, get the profits, withdraw it in my bank account, but I would not go over 100000 because psychologically I was scared because I had lost 100000 yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would say the most between those two accounts, maybe like 43000 in a day. Mm-hmm. In a day. Wow. 43, That's somebody's salary in a day. for the year. Yeah, 43000 in a day. But now I've gotten to the point where my account can be well over a hundred. But it was for a while that I could not see my account over $100,000 without getting anxiety. Mm. So you were saying that you're not a businesswoman. Mm-mm. How is that inf- uh, impacting your business? It doesn't. Because I make money from trading. I, I know, but you're it. running a bit. Bu- Jessica, I hear you saying you don't care about running a business. But the truth is you are running a business. But I don't. Okay, so tell me how you have this fully operable business 
and it's generating seven figures and you're not doing anything. You wait, t- start your day off. W- what are we doing? I trade and I take care of my gym. Okay. I do not do anything in my business except for Monday nights. I have one trading call for the month for people that's in the course to ask me whatever questions they want. Who's doing the work in your business? What work is there to do? It's no work. I mean, somebody has to respond to customer service. No, I suck at that. It's Who's really doing bad. it? <laughs> she think it's a joke. <laughs> she really think I'm joking. <laughs> somebody has to see the money that's coming in, know how many sales are coming in. Do you have like a team? No, Donnie. I trade. And I don't run my business. It's God. God running the business. God is running God. the business. God is running the business. He said, I still want to keep her tank full. Mm-hmm. So, I'm not joking. Like, I'm so serious. So you don't log into your course platform. Okay. Oh. So Michael helps you run the business portion. Is it safe to say that he's the business kind of advisor behind the brand? Yes. Okay. Because somebody got to be doing something. But it's really, Michael, can can he say something? He can. He you can. Repeat, you can repeat it? What? It, what? No, I mean, she has a lot of other resources. Too. Okay. Yeah. That's, but she doesn't know about that because she doesn't pay for it. Got you. Oh. So here's what I want. And I'm asking you these questions because I want people to see, like, there are other women and men who are similar to you who just know a skill set. I don't want to start a business Um, I just, I'm just really good at this thing, but that person is also just like Michael told you leaving so much money on the table because they fear the business portion of it. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's a relationship, Mm -hmm. but for somebody else, it might not be a relationship for somebody else. They could sit down with me and I'm Mm -hmm. saying, man, you're really good at this. You need to turn this into a business. Let me help you set up all these automations and these integrations and these SOPs and systems and processes and workflows to you, that sounds overwhelming. To me, I can have it done by the end of the week, right? Yeah, that's so disgusting. Yeah, like, I know it, it sounds boring, but I want people to have a realistic idea of what's actually happening. You're not running the business. Mm-hmm. You have a bit, and when we're talking about business, we're not talking about the trading. You 100% do your own trading. Mm-hmm. The business portion is your courses and your mentorship and all those things that you're doing. You're not running the business behind that part, but you have systems that are running it for you, Mm -hmm. which is why systems, you guys, are so important because you're literally running an additional seven-figure empire or on its way to be an empire simply because somebody identified that you needed to be teaching this Mm -hmm. and they helped you out on the back end and say, hey, all I need you to do is do what you're skilled at doing. How it's going to get to the end user, let me do that part. Yeah, thank God for Michael. So that's why we're a power couple because he definitely filled in the gaps in everything. Like with trading, I've been able to be so successful because I believe in the power of compounding, right? Like you make, like you said, how much have I made the most in one day? 43000 But if I make 43000 today, 21000 tomorrow, 9000 the next day, 7000 the next day, just depending, it's like, you don't look at it as, you know what I'm saying? It's like the money just keeps compounding. Mm-hmm. So the trading, it just grows. Yeah. I like looking at trading numbers. I don't really like looking at business numbers. Yeah. Or do I, I don't know. It's just. If you had to start managing your business or running your business. Oh, it would go to shit. <laughs> <laughs> I would just go back to trading. <laughs> One, because trading is what I love. I feel like you should love what you do. Trading is what I love. But two, just because I'm not I'm not skilled at that. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm just not. I love that you're confident enough to, like, really be transparent about that. Yeah. Because somebody else would sit here and have a whole bunch of fluff about, oh, yeah, we do this, we do that, we do. I don't do any. No, I trade. Yeah, no, I don't like business. I don't like it. I don't even want to do it, like. 
It's not, you know how you said when I was talking about trading and trend lines and all that stuff, I'm over here with trend lines. I'd be like, really? Okay, yes. So my trend line goes here. I connect this to this. My fib goes from top to bottom, high to low, da 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 And that's interesting to me. You talking about trading and systems, I'm, is, you know how you said my trend lines was like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Your You're over here like and, okay. SOPs, right, processes, right. workflows, frameworks. You have no framework. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And I don't want a framework. Yeah, I don't. I love that. I mean, I don't love that, but I love that. I love that you have been able to create success doing this. I love that you have the support that allows you um, to do that for sure. Yeah, because I think that God, you know, and I, I talked about this to another one of my friends. I feel like God ordains you in certain lanes, mm -hmm. in certain areas, and then Whatever he puts his hands on will grow without effort if yeah. it's your thing. Mm -hmm. So trading is my thing, and because it's what I'm called to do, he anoints it. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to worry about anything else because it was the or it was him ordaining that that made it so successful. Even you think about podcasting, well, Michael and Troy and Rashad, like, Earn Your Leisure has grown, but there were so many people that had business podcasts also. Mm -hmm. So what made their so successful? God or anointed it and said, I want this to grow. So if it's not your thing, it's never going to manifest or do what you need it to do anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I just, I don't want to do things outside of my lane because my lane is what I'm anointed to do. Mm. And that's why you're being blessed over and over again. Mm -hmm. So when you're booked to speak, you're typically booked to speak teaching specifically about trading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's just that that's my interest level, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You're a brand new mom, Jessica. Mm -hmm. How old is Legend? Ten months. Ten months old. Mm -hmm. What's a typical day like? for you as an entrepreneur, as a trader, you, you, you don't identify as an entrepreneur. You only identify as a trader. Mm -hmm. So walk me through your day and how you're doing this, like where you can set literally your trades mm -hmm. your, on yeah, Sunday yeah. Mm -hmm. and chill out for the rest of the week. Well, okay. Well, let me, let me go back. Let me go back. So I still look at the market, but I'm not executing anything until my alerts get hit. But like sometimes a setup can be, can come about throughout the week that mm -hmm. you didn't see prior to, because the market's always fluctuating, right? It's always um, making new highs, new lows, so forth and so on. So on Sunday, I'll look at the market. A lot of stuff I don't see a setup on, but the stuff that I do, I'll set my alerts and execute it later on. Mm -hmm. With Legend, my answer is going to change now because we just put him in daycare. So okay. now I have flexibility. Before, girl, I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off, okay? Because I'm a very organized person, and with a baby, you can't be as organized or you can't be as structured. Like so planned. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Like I used to, when Michael and I first met, this was my typical day. I would literally sleep during the day. I would wake up around like 7 p.m., go to WeWorks every day at midnight, stay in WeWork, literally looking at market, like researching like news and fundamentals and stuff like that. Because I was like on point with, you know, fundamental analysis and stuff like that. The, the reason that the market moves in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I would watch Bloomberg overnight because, you know, London Sessions 3 a.m., yeah. place my trades. Like that's when I used to trade daily. Mm -hmm. Then... I would go to the gym at 5 a.m., work out, then go back home, 6 a.m., I would take a shower, everything, and be ready for a New York session, which was 8 a.m., right? <laughs> right? And then I would go to sleep after I placed those trades. Mm -hmm. So that was my typical day. Then Legend came, and now it's like, one, I have to sleep at night now. So I'm still really trying to figure out my full schedule. Okay. I'm still in the process of, like, figuring it out. Now that he's in daycare, it's a little bit easier. And then also the transition of not even just legend, Michael, in my life, too. Like, when I was single, I could – it was just different. Like, I could sleep all day and not have to worry about another human being. Yeah. I could sleep all day and then work all night. Mm-hmm. 
now with Michael in the picture, I mean, he's sleeping at night, so I have to spend time with him during the day. Mm-hmm. And Legend, I have to accommodate during the day. So, so how's just, that transition? So now you have to be the person that makes the most adjustment in your routine. Mm-hmm. How has that affected you? Oh, it's affected me tremendously. Like how? We're in therapy. Yeah? Yeah. Because of... But in a good thing. In so a good therapy way. is awesome. Everybody should be in therapy. In a good way, but full transparency. I wasn't used to my life that I have now, and it was hard for me to identify who I now am as a woman because the girl that was single for literally 28 years of her life now has to figure out how to adjust a person into my life. Not only that, living with a person. I never lived with a man before either. Mm -hmm. So that's an adjustment. And then now being a mom is adjustment. So it's just like, it's just like a new level that you have to rediscover. Mm -hmm. I mean, but that's how life just kind of unfolds. There's always going to be a different level. And therapy is a great thing. Also Mm -hmm. surrounding yourself with other women, um, couples who are identifying kind of with the same issues right now. Mm -hmm. But you are, you had to have only been in a relationship for like maybe a not even a year before y'all got pregnant, girl. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm <laughs> doing the math <laughs> over here. <laughs> y'all have only been together. It was ten, a year. Two, two years. Legend is 10 months. You're pregnant for nine and a half months. Why you got to put that out? We got it. Like I'm that. doing I'm doing the math because if you carry the one over here, multiply it times two. But remember I told you we were friends first. So okay. We knew so am I buying that y'all we were friends together. first? I need to know because you're busy. Te- t- technically, you're busy. You're sleeping all day. You're trading all night. You got stuff to do. How do you create space? <laughs> I see why the title of this is called Full Transparency. <laughs> how do you create, first of all, how did the meeting go? Like, how do you, as successful as you are with your skill set, even get in position to meet someone who is at that level of success? The first person who said, Jessica, you need to do a course. First off, this is going to be so bad to even admit this. <laughs> but prior to May, I didn't even know who Earn Your Leisure was at first. May of this year. So when was this? 2022? 2022. 2021. 2021. Yo, okay, so full transparency. Uh-huh. I didn't know who Earn Your Leisure was. And when I started with Social Proof, we were signed to Earn Your Leisure. <laughs> we were on the network. I'm like... <laughs> Every time, it's just like EYL, EYL. And one yeah. day, I'm like, so what's this EYL thing? Yeah. <laughs> and so, now I love them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love them too. So listen, so it started out. I didn't watch podcasts for the record, Michael. I didn't even know what a podcast was while I was doing a podcast with David. I'm like, where do people even see this stuff at? <laughs> yeah, so let me give you the the birth of this story. So remember I told you I was a personal trainer. So all the training people I knew. So Jason and Helani, I was super close to whatever. Okay. Jason used to follow me on social media. Jason had just, I think, I don't even know if Circle of CEOs had started at this point. But he was like, yo, sis, you need to do a course. Like, you need to do a course. You need to do a course. You need to do a course. This was before I ever had a course. But he was like, yo, like, I see you teaching. Like, I see what you do on Sundays. Like, what you doing? Like, you know, I'm posting. Because, again, I, I never sold anything. So I wouldn't be on social media. Even if you go through my social media now, you would never see anything of, like, selling, selling, selling. So he's like, you need to do this. He was like, you need to come to this event. It's going to be this, um, what did he say? He was like, it's a, what was it? It was like a networking event. Mm-hmm. He was like, you need to come to it. It's for business people, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Like, I was so reluctant, and I really wasn't even going to go at first. So I go to the event, and it was a earn your leisure event, mm-hmm. um, networking event in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So that's how it started. And they talking mad business, so you bored than a month. Yeah, and I was in there all of, like, I remember I walked through, met who I needed to meet. I was in there all of, like, 20 minutes. It wasn't long at all. I was about to walk up the steps. Mm-hmm. And he called me on the steps. Mm-hmm. And he was like, how you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, hi. <laughs> and he's like, I follow what you do. Like, I, I think you pretty dope. Like, 
that's what's up. Like, we should connect. So then we just exchanged He Instagrams. pulled the we should connect play. Yeah. Okay, I like it. I we like should connect. We should I connect. Like what you have going on, blah, 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 blah. Like, this is my event, da, 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 da. Like, we should connect. So we just exchanged Instagrams. Okay. And that was the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so then... I guess I kept posting or whatever, and he told me, he was like, we should have you on the podcast. That's how it started. Okay. Then I was like, Michael, (laughs) was we should have you on the podcast, like, code for I got to get a way to get to know this woman? Hey, hey, are you a service-based entrepreneur that helps your clients or customers get some type of result? but you're struggling to post and communicate your message on social media. You don't know how to type a caption that connects and gets people's attention and converts them from just someone who's following you on social to becoming your customer or your client. Great news is that's my superpower. So I'm sending you three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays directly to your phone of exactly what you need to post to get people to buy and convert them into clients and customers. All you have to do is join my program, Post to Paid, and you can do so by texting the words Post to Paid to 404-737-2767. And the best news is just $37 a month. So hurry up, send me the text. I'm looking for it now. Well, I just knew the potential. I seen the potential in her. Like I didn't I didn't I didn't create the intimacy around her with her. She did. Okay, you saw her potential. You kept it bit. So this was really business. It wasn't like let me put her on so I can put her on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was business. Okay. It was business. So you go, you do the podcast. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a really large platform. Mm-hmm. You go and you do your thing. What do you talk about on that episode? Trading. I talked about literally the markets. I talked about trading. I thought about I talked about literally just for us and why and Michael how, just over there like how, yes girl how trend lines baby trend lines she first went first step oh invest fest was your first thing yeah okay I was on invest fest before I was on EYL podcast okay y'all yeah. weren't dating when you no. did invest fest Mm-mm. okay we weren't at all um were y'all flirting no no Michael says no this point okay no nope. did you have any interest like oh he cute I mean <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought he was a nice person. Okay. She wasn't attracted to me at that time. She wasn't attracted to you at that time. Okay. I am attracted to him. Why would you even say that? <laughs> Were you attracted to her at that time? I thought she was very attractive. You thought she was. You were in a situation. Okay. Okay. So you do invest fast, then you do earn your leisure. At what point does it transition from let me get you booked for this, this, and this to let's go to dinner? Michael's brother was dying at InvestFest. And um, I'm very spiritual. And, like, I knew something was wrong. Like, you know, you could talk to somebody. You could feel energy and stuff like that. Like, I just, I was just... I just asked, like, basically what was wrong or whatever the case may be. He told me about his brother. His brother had COVID, but he was in a coma. Mm. And he was dying. And it started out, I was just praying for his brother. With him? Well, I said a prayer with him for his brother. And then I was checking on him, like, with his brother or whatever. I would check on his brother. Like, he was really in my spirit. Like, I thought about him a couple of times. Okay. And so just checking on him or whatever the case may be. And then just over time, I don't know, we formed a friendship. Yeah. And then he looked at my business and was like, you need this, 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 this. You need to do this and yada, yada, yada. And it was literally just business. Like we would go to we work together, straight business and just do business. And then over the course of time, like you keep talking to somebody and you're always around them. Then it just like. You know, you start to like like a person, and mm-hmm. then I saw the type of person that he was. Like I'm talking about, this man is so loyal. Like his brother was dying. I'm talking about he lived in Atlanta. He would fly to New York every single week to go be with his brother mm-hmm. and just sit in the hospital while his brother was just in the coma, and then fly back home every week. Mm. And I just thought that that was so like the values. It's kind of like me and my family, mm-hmm. and. That's how it started. What are the three things that are most attractive to you about Michael? Loyalty, Mm -hmm. how he loves his family. Um, It's so many. 
I can't do it. It's just three. Give me one more. Um, his spirit. He's such a happy go lucky person. Like it's certain things where even like if I'm like sad or whatever, he's just a big fluffy teddy bear that just make you like laugh mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of posting, at least you used to. I'm not I don't I'm not on social media a whole lot, but you probably still do a lot of posting about how grateful you are to have somebody like that in your life and how how grateful you are to have somebody like that be the father of your child. Mm -hmm. um, when you, first of all, what I'm getting from this, just single ladies who are successful, who are busy, say yes to the invitation. Say yes, because had you said no to the networking event, this wouldn't even be a thing. Yeah, it wouldn't. you just still I be over there. Jason, Jason Lobdell, you the reason that legend is here. Shout out Mr. Two Weeks Out for being the reason. Is he the God? Is he the Godfather? No. He needs to be the Godfather. He is the reason for the entire connection. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk to Jason and Helani about that. You need to talk to Jason and Helani about that for sure. What are some things that you're struggling with right now? You seem so easygoing. Mm -hmm. Everything is just kind of, you know. <laughs> what do you struggle with um what do I struggle with freedom of my single life mm -hmm. not you miss being single move, sometimes not to really move like moving how I want to move meaning I used to love traveling and just I will be gone like I will wake up and be like I want to go to Africa today and book a flight and be gone and just I think it's so crazy because he mentioned this the other day. We're going to um, Jamaica for our birthday, and I just met a lady. Y'all have the same birthday? Eight days apart. Okay. So we celebrated four days after his, four days before mine. Okay. So he said something. He was like, I miss, I've been missing a very important thing about you. I'm like, wait. He was like, I forgot that you just love to travel. Like, you used to travel all the time, and you haven't been on a trip ever since, really, since I've been pregnant. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, like, I was the type of person before him. 2019, I went to Thailand for a month by myself. I went to Singapore for a month by myself. I went to Malaysia by myself. I went to Africa literally right along the time where we met. I went for a month by myself. Like, I would be out and just travel the world. Do you feel like you're losing a part yes. of yourself, or do you feel... And I was not ready for it. I, on paper, was ready for it. Like, oh, I want to be this successful. I want to have this amount of money. I, then I want a baby. And, and then I want to have a beautiful house. And then I want a fiance and get married and stuff like that. Like, I definitely went through an identity crisis that I just really, like, it sounds great. But to go through the emotions of it all was a whole different thing because even with that I'm a very traditional person so I knew I did not want to live with a man until I was at least engaged mm -hmm. or married so then we got engaged that was our first night sleeping together in the house mm -hmm. and we moved in after that we got engaged October legend was born in November so now I have to get accustomed to living with a man and, and bringing a baby bringing a baby in it was very it was a big adjustment mm -hmm. like I'm talking about do you feel adjusted now yeah I feel like you know I'm at the place where I I'm super grateful like I love our family and stuff um but it definitely was an adjustment and then even our you have two different dynamics of people that were born two different ways and now you have to learn how to coexist. Mm -hmm. It was times that where both of us questioned, like, yo, I don't know if this going to work. Yeah. Um, Especially with the pressure of the baby. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if this going to work. Like, maybe we just not compatible. Like, maybe we just not meant for each other. Like, you go your way, I go my way. Like, certain things where it's just like how he was raised was completely different from how I was raised. And if you're raised a certain way, you don't see things beyond what you see because that's how you were raised and vice versa. So having to learn compromise and communication has been a very big thing. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Yeah. I don't think people realize that when we say how I was raised, it's really synonymous with how I've been programmed. Mm -hmm. And I think if we start, like if we have minor tweaks in language, Mm -hmm. it makes a whole lot more sense to us. Like if you, if you approach the situation with, well, the way that I was programmed is blah, blah, blah. It hits a little differently mm-hmm. because feeling raised comes from love and care and nurturing, mm-hmm. whereas programming is like I didn't have a choice in the matter. Mm-hmm. Um, you eat fried chicken because you, mm-hmm. your parents gave you fried chicken. Mm-hmm. You are a Christian because your parents were Christian. Mm-hmm. And so we are programmed. Mm-hmm. Um, Girl, and not why every- you hit both of them on the nail <laughs> for both of those, though? Like, yeah. even the two examples that you just mentioned was two things that we had to go through because, like, you know, a fitness girl that's healthy, mm-hmm. you talk about submission, you want me to cook for you, but I'm going to cook some grilled chicken, I'm going to cook salmon and vegetables but you come from an italian household that you just like pasta and lasagna all this stuff that i don't eat like i'm talking about that's all that's all i don't even know how to cook that (laughs) like i'm talking about that's a whole thing like i don't even like pasta so then you come to uh, somebody that's obsessed with pasta and loves pasta like hold on no you need to eat salmon and vegetables do you understand what those carbs are doing to your body and then you got somebody that's been eating that their whole life what you mean what is doing to my body like like, I've been eating this my whole life. Don't know his brothers come over. All you eat is salmon and vegetables. Like, what is wrong with you? All yeah. you eat is broccoli. Mm-hmm. It's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Y'all have a difference in religion as well. Um, no. <laughs> it, but we almost broke up because he made a joke that he wasn't Christian, and I almost broke up with him on the spot. <laughs> like, was this pre legend or no, after? I was pregnant at the time. Okay. And we were in his living room, and I was like, okay, so first off, when I got pregnant, the first thing my mama told me, this full transparency, okay? Why are you looking up at the ceiling? <laughs> full transparency. He's over there studying, like, my set up and equipment. Said, my mom said, this can. who I wanted him to be but it wasn't that like you say you're programmed a certain way but I did know my spirituality is Mm non-negotiable it isn't and call it what you want you know I do understand there are people with different religions or whatever but the guy I serve he never led me astray and he always been there for me and even when we talk about the abundance and all these different things it's not because of me it's literally because of God it is because of God in me and I know that so it's not ever something that I have questioned or choose to question just because how can you wake up in the morning and then question if there's a God Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't wake ourselves up. Yeah. Like, it was certain things that I just, they're, they, they, they're they not going to be negotiable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when he made the joke that I wasn't Christian, I'm like, yo, if you really serve God, you wouldn't even make a joke like that. Yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not funny. Yeah. I started crying, like, on the spot. He's like, I'm just playing. I'm like... But you shouldn't play like that. Like, I was really bothered. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? So then I really started questioning, like, yo, like, are you spiritual? Like, you say you want to lead, but how can you lead me if you're not led by God? Like, it was a whole thing. Like, it was a whole thing. And then we, I used to write our vision board, right? At the beginning of every year, we would do vision boards. I say every year like it's been five years, but right. But still, you've written two vision yes. boards, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're thinking about the third one now. 
<laughs> so I write on our vision board and under his, we have our short term goals, our long term goals, and then what we want to accomplish like now. So under his, I write get closer to God because he was born Catholic. Now, Catholic is a form of Christianity, but it's a whole different type of Christianity. So I told him, I was like, well, he was like, I was just playing. Like, I, I, I'm, no, what he said was, I'm not Christian. I'm Catholic. I was like, oh, well, you made it seem like you were something else. Like, I mean, that still means that you're a Christian. We just got to work on some things. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So then I told him, I want you to get closer to God. I mean, he was all for it. Like, you know, that's the only way our relationship was going to work. And so I write, get closer to God on the vision board. And one of his friends come over and he read the vision board. He like, (laughs) good luck with that one. (gasps) That's how I felt. I'm like, what? Like, I snapped on his round. I was like, what do you mean? Like, I just felt like he was the adversary. Like, what do you mean? Like, there were no words like now you're like have you been playing me this whole time are you really christian your friends know you best yes Mm -hmm. that's how i felt because the very first time we went out to eat he told me like he was spiritual maybe we should have went more into depth about each particular thing Mm -hmm. so now i'm pregnant with somebody that i don't even know if he serves the same god like and then I just started praying for him. I wrote in his my, my prayer journal every night, like, God, please bring him closer to you. Please bring him closer to you. Like, I was really concerned. But, like, he really, you know, he desires a relationship with God and stuff like that. That's where you start. But then I still question, okay, well, does that mean we're aligned? Because just. But isn't part of our purpose to introduce the people around us to God? Yeah, but that's what I mean by I still question were we aligned? And the reason I did was because the way I was raised, the man, if you lead, you lead by God. Mm-hmm. Is God man, woman. You have to, I need a prayer warrior and a family. If we're going through something, who you turn into to make sure we get out of this? Mm-hmm. If it's not God, like who's praying over our household? Like what is the, what is the armor that we are putting that's protection around mm. us? If it's not God, like who, 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 who is it? Cause yeah. it's not going to work if that's not it. You know what I'm saying? Not for me, maybe for other women, but not for me. Yeah. And I feel like the only way we're even going to have a relationship is if God's in the middle of it, because our decisions, our very existence, our being, our thoughts, our morals are yeah. encompassed by being spirit led first. Like there are certain things I feel like you don't even have to question about a person if they're truly led by God, because certain decisions they're not going to make if they are, mm. you know? I love how committed you are to your faith and yeah. God. Is this something that is still a work in progress? Like therapy is helping, you guys are doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we have this thing now. He prays every night. I pray every morning over our Ooh, family. Oh, I love that. Um, he definitely prays a lot. So I've even seen the growth. Like it was one time, this was very early on in our relationship, it was it it was something a lady on a flight or something you don't remember that it was some lady on a flight and she like get in your mic oh, I'm sorry <laughs> it was a lady that I think I don't know if she was about to did she have a heart attack or whatever you gotta fill me in I don't know but it was a lady something happened he was on a flight and he just started praying for the lady and he was like oh this girl is getting in me or something like that <laughs> and he was like that wouldn't have been his first inclination Oh, she had a panic attack. Yeah. That's the best way to rub off on somebody for sure. Yeah. So is it a work in progress? I mean, I still think he needs to do some Bible study, but granted, like, he's willing, his heart is open, and now he loves to go to church. Mm. That's all I can ask for. I mean, that's not all I can ask for, but you know, it's that's a, a healthy start. start. Yes, it's a, a healthy very start. healthy start. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, and we have to appreciate. Not even just the men, but the
doing the work, mm-hmm. you end up single again. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's when things need to end. As yeah. long as you guys are continuing to do the work, you know, yeah, and being in alignment, and and you have this baby now, yeah. And so over the next twelve months, as we wrap up this conversation. What do you see are your top priorities for yourself, like, in order? Um, We've talked about you feeling kind of, like, lost in who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, We've talked about the business, and it's kind of like, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You're a new mom. You're a new fiancé. You're in therapy. You're growing. You're evolving. Over the next 12 months, being the mega woman that you are, living, like, a real transparent life. Because online, you look perfect. Do I? For sure. Really? Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. You look perfect online. <laughs> what are the things that you're prioritizing over the next 12 months? Um, You mean like checkoffs that we need to do mm-hmm. or that I need to do? Okay. So the first thing is we need to set a date to finally get married. I've been dragging my feet on it for the past year since our engagement just because um, it was a lot. Like... The whole transition was a lot. I haven't had time to plan a wedding. But you want to be married. You Mm -hmm. want to get married specifically to Michael. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I want to get married to him. We, again, we had some things we needed to work on on the back end in terms of, like, not just him, even me, you know, being more submissive and things of that sort and being the woman that I need to be for him just as much as he needs to be the man for me. Mm -hmm. So um, therapy's helped a lot, and we're continuing to grow and evolve in that. So we need to get married. That's a priority for planning the marriage or planning the wedding Okay, is a priority. Um, Of course, being the best mom and father that we can be or whatever, being the best parents for a legend that we can be. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to open my school. I was opening a school in Tanzania prior to. That's a business, girl. Be careful. You don't like that. But that's a philanthropy thing. I don't look at it as it's, a business. I it, mean, okay. Somebody got to run it. Yeah. Somebody got to study the data and analytics. We got to know how many kids are enrolled, how many teachers are coming and going. Okay. Well, <laughs> I will do the fiduciary responsibility. <laughs> fiduciary <laughs> responsibility <laughs> okay so you can be a ceo when you're passionate about the yes thing. yes okay so i i launched a school i have the property that it's gonna be at mm-hmm. i just need to set up and go to africa to actually open it okay i have somebody over there that's gonna be doing the operations and everything and then i also have the students that's gonna be teaching so it's just a matter of me going over there to put it in motion okay um, and you're doing that in the next 12 months? Yes. Okay. So that was three. Mm-mm. The wedding, being the best parent, and opening your school mm-hmm. in the next 12 months. So when we have you back on full transparency, you'll be married, popping as a mom, figuring things out with your schedule, yeah. and the school will be schooling the with school you as schooling. the founder. The founder. And maybe not the CEO. You don't have to be the CEO. Yeah. But um, one thing that I have learned from every uber successful person that I know is that regardless of how limited your experience is in running the business, you have to be involved in how the vision of the business continues to carry out. So I agree. never get so far from the operations of what you're building in your name, whether you love it or not. Like, this course and everything that you have, the business behind trading that you're doing, whether you love it or not, is being built in your name. Mm-hmm. And you want to make sure you're staying connected to the vision and the direction that that's going in. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I love it. Okay. True. Any last? I think mm-hmm. that there's room for growth, though. I mean, I know we got to wrap it up, but I think it's room for growth, though. Like, I think that my 30-year-old self doesn't like any business and stuff like that. But, like, as I grow. Yeah. Then as I get older, but then it's like also complex. I think it's more so to do with passion. Yeah. Um, And maybe not. You might always hate the idea of doing business. mm -hmm. You are a visionary. That's Mm -hmm. what it sounds like to me. You're a visionary and you might always be the type of visionary that has an idea that delegates it to somebody who is more operational. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that, 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 that right it, there. That's it, I that, just freed you. That, that's it right there. That. I'm a, look, I'm not a CEO. I am a visionary. Yeah. And that's totally fine. Yeah, that's it. 
That's it, That's right it. there. Mm-hmm. You need to read the book uh, <laughs> Traction and Rocket Traction. Fuel. These okay. talk a lot about the two main helms of running a business because the truth is you got a business and somebody's running it. It's just not you. But it's going to speak to half of the book speaks to the visionary and how you don't have to be afraid to go into business simply because you don't like business. There are people who love business, like the Michaels of the world, who will get in there and run ship Mm -hmm. and make sure that everything is doing what you visualized it to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also reminds me of this one book. It's um, You ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know in this book where he talk about the cash flow quadrant? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if everybody's whole goal is to be, because I feel like most people that start businesses, they start businesses because they want to make money. I just got to a place where I can make the money without having the business. But you know in that book where he talk about like, all of the, or the employee and then the businesses, the whole goal of the businesses is to become investors so that they can have their money, make more money. Yes. So it's like, if I'm already in that space, like I'm the end stop here. (laughs) (laughs) What's the point? But you have been gifted and you are a strong believer of God. And you know that God does not give you a gift just to serve you. Yeah. So the whole point is for you to serve other people and share his gospel That's your point. Okay. That's why you have your course. That's why you are doing what you're doing. You're just not running it. So with that said, um, it has been a pleasure to have you on the couch with me at Full Transparency. I love that. And yes. I love you. Yes, and I, love I do. The I do. Thank you I so do. much. Tell everybody where to me. find you. It's Jessica Lane on Instagram. I-T-S-J-E-S-S-I-C-A-L-A-I-N-E. All right. Um, Yeah. Okay. And even though she doesn't run the business of her business, people can actually do business with you Mm -hmm. um, by purchasing your course. They can learn more about trading Mm -hmm. um, and becoming successful, whether they want to do it on a part time or a full time basis. Yeah. How can we get uh, our students registered for your program? Just invest. J.E.S.S. Like Jessica. J.E.S.S. Invest dot com. All right, you guys. Well, you have it here. We have learned and dispelled the whole theory of uh, trading currency, trading Forex specifically is a scam. It's very, very real. Uh, Just Google it, dictionary it, right? We sat here with Jessica Lane, who is someone who has discovered this skill set, mastered this skill set, and is now prepared to teach you how to learn the very same skill set I thank you for being here for this episode of Full Transparency. Don't forget, if you are an entrepreneur and you are looking for mentorship in areas of personal development, financial development, and professional development, you need to become one of my actionable CEOs, actionableceo.com. Let me get my hands on you and whip you into shape, all right? I'll see you next week.